Episode 10 of the Babysitter's Club TV show is Hello Camp Moosehead, Part 2. I didn't really like this episode, to be honest. Um, I thought it was predictable. So if you watch my review for Part 1, I guessed what would happen in this episode, and all of my guesses came true. So it, it was really predictable. I could figure out where each storyline was going to go before the episode even started. So, uh, you know, because of that, it made me sort of dislike the episode. But there were some new and different things in the episode, and those were my favorite parts, all the stuff I didn't predict. So the storyline with Christy, um, the storyline with Christy is that Karen's disappeared, and Christy teams up with Mallory and Jesse to figure out what happened to Karen. And I, I did not think that would happen. So it's sort of like a mystery. They, they have a clue which leads them to this hermit's house in the woods, and that was really cool that they explore this creepy old house. And they find another clue, which uh, leads... Th they find several clues, which leads them to uh, a bus station where Karen's trying to go back home. And Karen admits she's really feeling out of place. She doesn't think anybody likes her. She feels like David Michael really doesn't like her. And so Christy helps Karen feel better. And she says, Karen, you're really my sister. You're not just my stepsister. You're my sister, and I love you. And, and they hug, and they become best friends. And that was really sweet. I did like the, the Christy storyline. And then the rest of the Christy storyline was exactly what I predicted. Namely, uh, the head counselor is so impressed with uh, Christy that Christy gets made a CIT. In fact, the entire Babysitter's Club gets made CITs. And <laughs> there's kind of this really funny um, joke uh, afterwards where uh, the, the head counselor basically forces all her problems on them. She's like, oh, you have a problem? Tell it to the Babysitter's Club members. Yeah, they're in positions of power. Complain to them about everything. <laughs> that was a hilarious twist. I really like that. Um, uh, at the end of the episode, um, Jesse and Mallory get made members of the Babysitter's Club, which is predictable. I mean, I predicted it. Uh, still a good ending, a really good way to end season one, because that way, um, at the start of season two, now Jesse and Mallory will be members of the Babysitter's Club, so we won't have to waste, like, two books on Jesse and Mallory joining the club. Although, you know, I really think those could have been good episodes, too. It's also a good idea just to start season two on a clean slate with these two new members of the Babysitter's Club. I know that the graphic novels did something similar, Right? So uh, they had like the four graphic novels, and then Mallory joins at the end of graphic novel number four. And then when they restarted the graphic novel series like five years later, they just got started with Mallory already in the club. So we didn't get to have a book of introducing Mallory. So that, that was interesting. And then they all did this pose. So they, they took a picture together and they did that pose from the cover. And um, yeah was an okay uh, way to end the, the, the series. I sure hope they, they have a season two, because like I said, they really set it up to uh, start season two off on the, the right foot. Although then, what would Mallory's first book be? If Mallory's book is not the one where she joins the club, what's, what's, what's her next book? Um, let's see, Mallory, Mallory on strike? No, not poor Mallory. That would be a terrible Mallory book to start with. Mallory in the Mystery Diary? Ugh, that's a terrible one. Poor Mallory doesn't have any really good books to start off with now that they took away the book where she gets interrupt- not interrupted, introduced to the club. Darn, poor Mallory. Um, anyway, <laughs> something to worry about next season. Um, Stacy's storyline was exactly what I thought it would be. It was taken from the end of book three, so Stacy and Lane are in the infirmary together because they both have a terrible case of Poison Ivy. Uh, they watched Days of Our Lives, which I thought was great. So they watched soap operas, and then they decided to become friends again. So that was cute. That was cute. I like that. Um, Claudia didn't have much of a storyline in this episode, to be honest. She was mostly sucked into Dawn's storyline. Dawn is leading a revolution, so first she has a lie-in where they complain about the art classes, and then she breaks into the head counselor's office and then shouts that they're having a total boycott of all camp activities and everybody gets up in arms and they build the protest line and there's a lot of screaming and shouting and the head counselor shows up and she basically says guess what camp is going to be canceled for everyone unless you stop and um she tries to kick Kaladia and um Dawn out of summer camp but 
that's when Christy comes to Christy comes um, uh, to her aid. All the other Baby Sears Club members show up and they give a passionate speech. And like I said, they get made CITs instead of being kicked out of the camp. So I thought it was good. I also thought it was, you know, a little strange that Dawn was so intense about this one girl not being able to buy a $50 t-shirt. Now granted, $50 t-shirt, that's totally outrageous. But I'm not sure that requires just stopping all life at camp completely. However, it does really fit with uh, the Dawn in the books. Because there's, there's several books where Dawn puts on like this social justice um, issue. So, you know, Dawn Saves the Planet where she's worried about the environment. Um, Dawn in the School Spirit War. Um, let's see, there, I think there's multiple books where she stands up for people with disabilities rights. Yeah, for disabilities rights and women's rights. Th those are multiple books. So it really is a, a lot like the Dawn from the books. Um, maybe not the way Dawn acts at, at, at the very start of the series, but certainly there are plenty of Dawn books. So this is definitely in character for her to be so, so invested in a big cause which really doesn't affect her all that much. So that's one of the things that's good about Dawn. Even if something doesn't affect her, she still cares. And uh, Marianne's storyline um, is that she has to do the play alone now because Stacy and Lane aren't there. And that was kind of interesting. So Marianne has to be the lead in the play and she struggles to be in charge of the play because she's not used to being the one who's in charge. And, you know, when there's a boycott, all of her actors run away. Oh, I forgot to mention, Karen gets really mad at Vanessa Pike. That was super hilarious. Karen and Vanessa Pike sort of fighting. Yes, that was awesome. <laughs> like, we, we've never seen them before. We have no reason to assume the two of them hate each other, but they just played it so perfectly. It was, it was great. That was brilliant. Um, so Marianne struggles to be in charge. And um, let's see, where is that? Uh, yeah, here's this book. So here's the book where they put on a play, and uh, Marianne's not in the play. Marianne's just hiding in the background because she hates being in plays, and she, she hates being in the spotlight, and she's very, very shy. And yeah, that sounds like Marianne, whereas in this, Marianne has to be the main character in the play as well as the director. And her problem is not that she's shy. The problem is she's having trouble keeping track of everything. I thought that was odd. I, you know, I thought they really should have gone into Marianne's shyness. Instead, they pulled up the, the storyline that Marianne's just unsure about being in charge. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think it quite fit Marianne. Um, uh, Logan gave her a pep talk to help her make, to help make her feel better. And I liked it. I thought it was okay. I just, I didn't like Logan as much as I did in previous episodes. I thought he was really good in previous episodes. And then this one, he just seemed less interesting to me. You know, um, his role was basically, I'm just supposed to be the hot guy who says supportive things to her. And uh, at the very end of the episode, she kisses him. And yeah, that's basically it. It felt like he had more of an active role in the... Um, of previous episodes whereas which is funny because he didn't do much in previous episodes so he probably did a lot more in this episode than he did in all of the previous episodes combined but it felt like he took more of a passive role in this episode so that's the end of a uh, season one I, like i said i hope there's a season two it seems like you know they have the, the perfect setup we can really start season two on a high note because uh, uh you know book number nine is dawn the ghost at dawn's house I don't really like that book. I'm totally fine with it being skipped. Book 10, Logan Likes Marianne. Mm, you know, that's a good book. I don't think they should skip that one. I, I think that's a, a fan favorite book. I think they should, uh, you know, make sure to have that in season two. Also, uh, book book 11 is Christy and the Snobs. That's a good one, too. And then book 12, Claudia and the New Girl. Ooh, Stacy has to move back to New York, right? There's there's like book 13. Isn't that where, where Stacy moves back to New York? So that's that's an interesting thing they could do um, for season two is, you know, have Stacy move back to New York uh, at the start. So move that book up. So she she um, moves back to New York at like episode one or episode two of season season two. Um, have the New York episode in the middle and then the last episode be Stacy comes back. I feel like that could have been because that's like a three book storyline. So that would be good. That would be a good um, way to end, you know, uh, to, to set up season two. So 
obviously I like to show if I'm already talking about season two and you know season one is less than a month old but yeah so overall I'd say you know th this episode was predictable um obviously I'm not the target audience in any way shape or form but I, I thought it was a predictable episode the parts I liked most were the parts which I did not predict so all the stuff with Karen and uh, a good chunk of the stuff with Marianne yeah and, um, yeah, that was basically, um, uh, how I felt about the episode. So, that's it. Goodbye, everybody.